Hi everybody, this is Eric here. I'm going to give a demonstration on the Dell Venue 11 Pro tablet, which is right here. Uh, this is a pretty nice tablet here. It's got an Intel i5 processor, similar to the kind you may have seen in laptops. It's got 8 gigabytes of memory, which is huge. Um, a myriad of accessories as well. It's light and portable. Uh, it's a big enough screen, which is great. Uh, what I like about it the most though is that I can run Android on it as well. So in addition to the accessories like the dock which turns it into a desktop, the little keyboard which with a, an attached battery that turns it into a laptop, I can run the Android software separately and either use Windows or Android. So you basically get the best of both worlds. But I'll tell you more about it in this video. Venue 11 Pro was available in different configurations such as having a slower Intel Atom processor or the Intel i5 processor. The tablets also came with either 2, 4, or 8 gigabytes of RAM. And because of bad experiences I've had with Android tablets having 2 or less gigabytes of memory or RAM, I purchased this used with 8 gigabytes. It's far more than what I need. This tablet has, from left to right, a mini HDMI port, a micro USB port, commonly found on Android devices, and an SD card slot. Towards the right is the power button and charge indicator light. The left side has a headphone jack, volume up and down buttons, which also access menus at boot, and unlike most Android tablets, it has a standard USB port on the lower left. Alright, check this out. Now if you've ever owned an Android tablet or iPad, some of you may know how hard it is to open the back and swap out replacement parts if necessary. If the battery or other parts fails and need replaced, not all models make it easy either. iPads and Android models don't even let you increase the primary storage capacity, at least to my knowledge. But on this Dell model and a few other models, the back is super easy to access and allows you to swap out and upgrade any parts. Simply turn it over, pop the lid, and there it is. No special hardware or skills needed. This gives you access to the processor once you remove the metal shield, the cellular card here, the M2-2260 solid state drive, and the 802.11ac Wi-Fi card, which is faster than 802.11n. You also get access to the battery. Simply slide the latch, then lift up on the battery. To reinsert the battery, simply place it at an angle and line up the teeth with the connectors on the board. Then lower it in place until you hear and feel it snap back in. That's it. Getting the panel back on is a bit trickier, but like the battery, you insert it at an angle starting from the top, then work your way down the sides and bottom, until the panel is back in place. Keyboards are nothing new for tablets and the Venue 11 Pro has two different keyboards available. This one I purchased on eBay as it has a battery underneath and extends the runtime. The Venue 11 Pro has Bluetooth so that a Bluetooth keyboard can also be used but will not have a battery to power the Venue 11. Since the keyboard has a battery, it can be charged separately using the micro USB ports or it will get charged along with a tablet when connected to it. Docks are nothing new for laptops and tablets, but not all of them offer a dock. Attach an external monitor, keyboard, and mouse to a dock and it becomes a desktop computer. Docks have an Ethernet port to provide a faster wired connection, but you could still use the Wi-Fi connection if you choose. This Dell Venue dock also gives you a headphone jack and USB port on the front, two additional USB ports on the rear, an HDMI port, and a DisplayPort connector. With the dock, you simply line up the bottom port of the tablet to the connector of the dock itself, let it rest on top, and the tablet can be controlled with the attached keyboard and mouse with the video output going to the external TV or monitor. Again, not different from other devices, but a nice accessory to have when you need it. So again, you attach a keyboard, mouse, and external monitor or TV to the dock, TV remote and sock drawer optional, line up the connectors, and place the tablet on the dock, and now you have a desktop computer. While it does limit portability, the trade-off is that you have more to work with and aren't so constrained by using just the tablet alone. With most Android tablets and iPads, the storage that comes with the device is the storage that you're stuck with. At least with Android tablets, you can put in a micro SD card and expand the storage that way. But it's only good for holding music, movies, photos, and things like that. Uh, under most circumstances, you can't download any anything from the Google Play Store and have it saved to that micro SD device. It's stuck on the tablet. Um, 
there are ways to circumvent that through the use of rooting. Uh, some people do it with their phones and tablets, but I don't recommend it if you haven't done it before. Um, I'm in that same basket. I've done it with a Nexus 7 and ran into a lot, a lot of problems with that. But at least with the Dell Venue 11 Pro and some others out there that have that, that option, you could take out the hard drive that's in there. In this case, it's a small solid state drive and swap it up with something bigger. So not only do you have expanded store space there, but with the larger space, you can do like I do and have the Windows 10 operating system along with Android at the same time. And you can use it for dual booting. Previously, I mentioned a few details about the hard drive. This is a solid state drive and the type is M.2 or simply M2. You can find these at Best Buy in a size that is listed as 2280, but the Venue 11 Pro takes 2260. 22 denotes the width in millimeters, while the 60 and 80 denote the length in millimeters. This drive's capacity is 256 gigabytes, which I have split for each operating system. That's plenty for Windows and any apps I would use, along with Android on all the apps that I can use there. In order to get Android on this, you'll need a few things. I'll breeze through it here as I'll probably end up doing a separate how-to video for this. You need a powered USB hub and two flash drives one for Windows and one for Android. Install the Windows installer to one flash drive first. When you launch the Windows installer, you'll need to partition or split the destination drive so that you have one section for Windows and another for Android. But Windows does have to be installed first. You can also dedicate more space to either operating system as you please. With that done, you can then go to android-x86.org and download the latest version of Android. From there, you can download Rufus that makes any flash drive bootable. Load the Android installer on the second flash drive, reboot the tablet, and load Android on the second partition. The installation process is a bit more complex compared to installing Windows, but rather easy once you have messed with it a few times. When that's complete, you can go into the BIOS by booting the tablet, holding down the volume down button until you reach the BIOS, then changing the boot order from Windows to Android. There are other methods available, but for now this may be the easiest for most people. After that, the tablet will reboot, and after a few seconds you're at the Android desktop. At this part, the tablet doesn't respond to touches, so to make a choice, you'll have to attach a keyboard or mouse. In typical Android fashion, it will still be loading things in the boot sequence, so it may take a bit of time to catch up. While not shown, the initial starting screen will prompt you to enter or create a Gmail account to begin the process, have you choose a Wi-Fi access point, and more. From there, you can go to the Google Play Store and download apps to your new device. Because Android is running in different hardware, you'll need to go into Settings and make the change listed above. This should allow you to play and utilize almost all apps from the Google Play Store. In regards to performance, this thing handles almost anything you throw at it. In games with many sprites like BB Tan, you'll hear the cooling fan running and the back of the tablet may get warm or even hot. The back panel isn't thick like other devices, but the processor being used isn't the kind used in mainstream tablets. Prior to this video, I removed the old thermal paste off of the CPU and applied new paste, which brings the heat down comfortably. There are a few important things to note about this. Uh, under Windows 10, obviously it does work with the keyboard and the dock attachment, but under, under Android it does not. Um, with the keyboard, there's no functionality at all. Same with the battery. Uh, when the Dell Venue 11 Pro is attached to the dock, like it is behind me, there's no video on the monitor. However, uh, you do get a wired connection, so it can use the Ethernet connection, but it's not something I would intentionally buy the dock just for having, especially if you're going to use it for Android. Um, something else is that I can't seem to find a lot of 
apps on the Google Play Store to create text documents or spreadsheets, which explains, uh, you know, it's, it's, it is limited in some ways in the fact that how much can you do fresh on a tablet? Not much. However, from Windows 10, uh, it's basically a computer, so you can start from scratch. So that's another benefit to having both Windows 10 and Android. Um, I've been on interviews before where I was able to have the tablet in dual boot mode, put a win boot into Windows, and show them the Money Minder spreadsheet and some other examples of things I've done uh, just by staying in Windows. So, but again, uh, just to you know give people an idea of that it's not going to solve everything, but it is still pretty powerful. Something else I've noticed is that when I detach the Dell Venue 11 from the dock when it's in uh, the Android mode, it loses the Wi-Fi connectivity. So at that point, I have to reboot it. Uh, something else is that I can also put it to sleep, but once I reboot it, or rather wake it up, uh, the Wi-Fi functionality is lost. So there may be hacks or ways around this that I, I may look into, but right now I'm happy with what I have. Um, so I just want to make that uh, make those points available to you. And if you like what you see and uh, you have any corrections, comments, or want to hear anything else, go ahead and drop me a line in the comments. All right, have a good one.